Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. May the peace of God be with you all. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Lord God Almighty for giving me grace and then all of us to begin the year. In fact, we don't take it for granted to begin the year. We don't take it for granted. So we thank God for that. I've seen some friends here. And then our dear director too is here. I see my brother, Ajakwa. And then my brother, Ahuakese, and the wife. And we have our father, Eria Dikini, uh, Danson, and the rest here. Before I proceed, I want us to go back to see the songs. You sang one of the songs, I think, uh, when Jesus' blood cleanses us, makes us whole, and then makes us like snow. If the musicians can remember to give us that song. Yeah, there is a song they sang. The blood. Oh, Jesus. precious. Yeah, I want to see the waist, brother. The I want us to have the waist. Uh, we are all going to read the waist together. If the IT team can help us. What can wash away my sins? Yes, yes, that song. Yes, that song. Yes, that one. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh, precious. Oh, Stand to our feet as we read the ways. What can wash away my sin? Let's go. We are ready. What can make wash her sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That make me white as snow. No other font I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's get seated. I want to ask a question. What are the key ways in the sun? What does the blood do? One, it washes. And then... It makes whole. So what is the effect of someone or something that has been washed? What is the effect? A clean. For good use. So in effect, if something is clean, what does, what does it look like? New. 
Let's clap our hands for Elder. Yeah, it is new. It is new. And that is what we are going to learn today because we are beginning the year the Lord has put on my heart a message that is going to talk about newness. And the title of the message is A People of God Unleashed to Do New Things. A People of God Unleashed to Do New Things. I want us to read from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. We are taking the reading from NIV. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I take it again. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Now, what we are going to learn this morning is how to operationalize the blood of Jesus, the power of God in us. You see that we are singing and we realize from the song that the blood cleanses us. And I'm saying that the effect of it is to make us new. And then, and so what? When you are made new, and so what? What impact does it have? So, just opposing this with the theme of the church for this year, we are talking about being unleashed to go and transform our spheres of influence. In other words, in other words, our world. But who is the person that is being unleashed? Is he the old person that is being unleashed? Is he a transformed person? Is he a whole person? Is he someone who has been washed? And what is the effect? What is the reason for the washing? If somebody takes his or her clothing to the laundry, what, what does he want to achieve at the end of the day? After it has been washed, after it has been cleansed, after it has been made whole, after it has been purified, after it has been refined, is it to be kept in the room? Or the person uses it for others to see that I have a cloth that has been washed. And look at it. It is as white as snow. So for us as Christians, and for that matter, as members of the church, ours is not to show off, but ours is to make an impact in our sphere of influence. And that is what we want to do this year. So we are saying that the people of God unleashed to do new things. So for us, because we are new, we are rather going to also make things new in the world. Hallelujah. And when we go through scripture, what the Bible is saying here, I want us to take note of. It's saying that the one in us, the one who has made us new, he is able to do immeasurably more than what you or I can think. Immeasurably more. Able to do immeasurably more than all we ask. All we ask is prayer. And all we imagine is our desire. 
the prayer aspect for that one you have been able to ask. The other aspect is that you also have some kind of desire, some kind of aspirations. And the Bible is saying that God is able to do more, more, more than what we are asking, more than what we pray for. So it means that the new person in you, what the Lord has deposited in you, is even more than what you know. And that is why we have to, with all these songs, with all this desire, we have to gather all, marshal all into the world to make an impact. In other ways, even our businesses, our academic lives, and whatever that matters in our life must be immeasurable. Immeasurable means you cannot measure it. Hallelujah. The need to go to the next glorious level is everybody's desire. In fact, as we begin the year, recently when we had our 31st night, I think many people went there with resolutions, praying for this and praying for that. But what God does in our lives is more than what you went and asked in the 31st night. It's more than that. So we come before him, we want to go to the next level, and we need the Lord who does the cleansing. We need him to begin with us and also end with us. I was saying something that if you look at the description of our Lord Jesus Christ, being Alpha and Omega. In between the Alpha and the Omega, there is no other word. In between the Alpha and the Omega, there is no other word. There is no word that hinders what the Alpha and the Omega does. There is no word that can truncate the Alpha or the Omega. So if we begin the year with Jesus, definitely he will end with us. Because in between... That is from the 1st January to the 31st December, in between the Alpha and the Omega. There is nothing like in June, this thing is going to truncate the plans of God. No, or July. So I believe very strongly that God is going to take us through. Because we are beginning with the Alpha and we are ending, we are beginning with the, uh, the Alpha and we are ending with the Omega. So may the Lord God Almighty take us through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need the Lord who is the beginning and then we need the Lord who is the end. And doing new things for us is a characteristic of the Alpha and Omega. In fact, God is not an apprentice in doing new things at all. For that one, he's not. And as we go through, see scriptures that tell us that God is doing new things. Indeed, he is doing new things. Hallelujah. Because that is the essence of the blood. It has come to make us anew. So wherever we are, that impact must be felt. In fact, within your own family, there must be newness. At your place of work, there must be newness. So if the previous year, you were not able to operationalize this kind of newness in wherever you are, that the blood of Jesus come along with. Now, we are saying that as we take the Lord's Supper today, the effect is what we want to experience. So that it will not be business as usual. We take it and you go and you still not have the effect. May God have mercy on us. So when you read from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, Hebrews 9, 14, he said that how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So by this scripture, I've come to understand that there are dead works. What we knew is that for something to be work, it means it has an effect. It has an effect. 
Those of you who did science, what is the formula of work? Yeah, the scientists are mountains. What is the formula of work? Force times distance. Force times distance. So what it means is that once they are saying that something is working, there is a, some kind of exertion of force. And then there is a, some kind of emotion that takes place. But here the Bible is saying that to clean our conscience from dead work. So what it means is that when the newness comes, and the cleansing takes place, and the washing takes place, something new that has an effect, that has life in it, takes place. So people are working, but they are doing dead works. People have conscience, but what emanates from their conscience outside Christ tends to be dead works. But as Jesus deals with us, and works in us, and we dine with him, and then he uses his blood to cleanse us, the result and the effect is that we are not going to do dead works, but rather works that have life. And I pray this morning that may life come in your life. If we have dead works, then we have dead lives. But if we have Christ, Christ will bring life in our life. So it is life within life. That one, it is only Jesus Christ who provides that life. And may it be our portion as we begin the year so that we don't work, we don't do dead work. May God have mercy. You see, when I was trying to look at the meaning of the theme, the unleashing, I begin to understand these things. Because unleashing says that to allow something to have full effect, to allow something to have full effect, to allow something, especially something previously held in check, to have its full effect. So by virtue of the fact that we have accepted Jesus Christ and we come to the Lord's table monthly, we have been given the grace when we have been released. But perhaps for some reasons that known to you, your giftings, your grace, and the power in you is being put in check without being released to have its full effect. And when you read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, normally when we are coming to the Lord's table, we read that passage. You realize that any time you do, do it in remembrance. So the whole concept of the Lord's Supper itself is for us to have full effect because we always keep ourselves, reminding ourselves that we do this, Jesus died for us, let's go and propagate the gospel. So it is our prayer that we will be released, unleashed. Our businesses will be unleashed. Our lives will be unleashed. The bottom line of the message is that God is preparing us on this first Sunday for us to have full effect. Full effect. Being unleashed is to allow something to have full effect. So we come to the Lord's table, we go and have full effect. And when we launch the vision, the, the theme, some people were suggesting that we should have made it transforming the world. But the explanation is that you alone can transform the whole world. We are using the word dear, and some people are questioning, oh, no, dear, why don't we say transforming the world? But the idea is that you alone can transform the whole world. But the dear here, you can put your so it is rather your word. And in other words, your sphere of influence. So that's the explanation, and that is what we are looking at. Your sphere of influence. Because we believe that the Lord has equipped you with something. But it is either you do not know, or 
you are using it, but not having its full effect. Or maybe you are so timid or you are intimidated for whatever reason. Or you don't even know that you have that thing. So for you to be able to do new things, you should know that I possess this thing. You should know that the Lord has made me, the Lord has washed me. The Lord has cleansed me. And the Lord has made me whole. So I'm going out as someone who has been cleansed. Amen. I just chanced on a research that somebody did on a particular local assembly. The resolutions that people make during the beginning of the year. And according to him, 22% of the resolutions involve health and fitness. That God Maybe health, it could be praying for healing or praying that he shouldn't fall sick. So when our brother was leading the program here, he was, we were praying it against accidents and all that. This is a concern. Then the second one is 18% of people pray about their career, their businesses, their works, and all that. The 15% growth and their personal interests and then 11% finances and then 8% family and relationships. But the question is, as people come to the presence of God and be praying about health, praying about money, praying about this, praying about that, do they also pray about what they can do to impact their generation? Transforming their sphere of influence with the values and principles of God's kingdom. That is another question that we need to ask ourselves. As we come and the Lord prepares us, do we have it in mind that what am I going to do with the name of the Lord at my place of work? So, a people of God being unleashed to do new things. The new things that we are required to do also involve that we take the word of God into the world. Hallelujah. So, for this year, it's a year of action. It's a year of work. But not dead works, as the Bible describes so, coming back to the scientific perspective, is the year of force and distance. So, when you are, you are motionless, you are standing one place, and you are not doing anything. You are not doing anything. No movement, no exertion of force, and nothing. The scientists will say that you are not working. So if the anointing is there and then the grace is there and then the cleansing has been done and then the wholeness has been achieved and at the same time that human figure that the Lord has invested all these things in him or her and then is there at a place of work nothing about Christ, nothing about impact is being felt. In the family, nothing about impact from the Lord is being felt. It means that it is a dead work. But God wants you to do new things. And the truth is that when God uses you, he blesses you. In fact, when it comes to human understanding, sometimes people contract other people and then they do the work and do the work and do the work, not dead work. They really do the work that is good. And then when it comes to payment, then the person will come and say that, okay, you did this, you did this, but because of this and that, I cannot pay you. But for us, 
If we avail ourselves for the Lord to use you, if God uses you, God blesses you. We serve a God who doesn't cheat. So if we are saying that focus on what God will use you to do, new things in your society, what it means is that this is the year that God is going to bless our church members than any other year that you can think of. Because we are going to work. And as you work for the Lord, you will get returns. So don't be scared about it at all. Don't be scared at all that hey, if I'm unleashed, then I don't know what is going to happen. When you read from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, when you read from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the Bible says that, it, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and future. I was telling you that when it comes to doing new things for his children, God is not an apprentice in this business. It is something that he himself desired that he does new things for his children. And when he was addressing uh, the people of Judah here, they were in captivity in Babylon. But even that, he was telling them that he was going to do new things for them. But these people were in captivity in Babylon. So what the Lord will do for your life for that one, do not be worried about it. Your concern is that we have prepared you and the Lord is preparing you and the Lord has unleashed you and the word unleash is to allow something to have its full effect. That's the meaning of the word. The word unleash is to allow. Allow. So if it is a pastor, if it is an apostle, that is not maybe allowing you or allowing you to do something. Now we are saying that you have been allowed to have full effect. If it is your wife, if it is your husband, if it is any other problem, if it is uh, any other issue, God this year has already done the unleashing. So what we are doing is to come and teach the church members, announce the church members that God is doing something new. And what God is doing is that he has unleashed his people. In fact, before every team comes, the Lord has already done the background work. So it is not we, as I stand here, causing God to even do the unleashing. He has already done the unleashing. Because when you were singing the song, you yourself acknowledge that he has done the unleashing. You acknowledge that he has done the cleansing. And then we were enjoying all these things. But we, someone has to bring it in the right perspective, at least to remind the congregation that the song you sang, go and work at it. Right? Someone has to bring to that perspective that the song you sang and then you were saying that I am as white as snow. You yourself said it, that I am as white as snow. So now I'm here to remind you that you said that you are as white as snow. And this is what you have to do. And then you also made a statement that I am whole. I am whole. So the effect of this wholeness must also be felt. And you know, these, are, these things are prophetic. They are prophetic. So if you find yourself in any way, any way for example, even your own business, and the business is not progressing, Meanwhile, too, the Lord has a covenant with you that whatever you are doing must be whole. When we were in the scripture union, we were singing a song, my hands are clean, my hands are blessed, brother. And anything I touch, surely must be blessed. But to what extent do we touch? That is the import of our message. To what extent do we touch? One of our brothers, our elders in the northern region, he went to Trek. And according to the district pastor, this testimony was given by a pastor. And then when he went, then his motorcycle, the motorbike broke down. Actually, what happened was that 
it caught fire. It caught fire. But he was able to quench it. And then when he started it, it was off. Then this man stood there. That place was very dangerous. It was in the middle of the night. And then he said, Lord God Almighty, I have come to do your work. And this is the situation. I pray and command in the name of Jesus Christ, if for anything at all, let this motorbike take me home. And then he prayed. And he started a motorbike. And it worked. It was not a dead work. It worked. And then he rode the motorbike to the mission house. And when he got there, that was the end of the motorbike. So it is now there in the museum. So anybody who comes there, then they say, come and see what the Lord has done. This thing, someone wrote it here. Say, oh no, I can't believe you. They say, someone wrote it. So if your hands are blessed, then that kind of blessing operationalize the blessing. Touch something and it will work. So that's what we are saying. Touch something. Let the thing go out and work. And the full effect will come. But for this man's faith, he would have stood there and they'd be crying. Oh, well, brother, I'm going to say, I'm going to Meanwhile, this man had something that could cause the motorbike to work. He had something. That, that thing was in him. Immeasurably than what you can think or ask. And that aspect of immeasurability is there with every individual. And I'm telling you this morning that the Lord has deposited something in you that is immeasurably than what you can ask or what you can think. Immeasurably than what is in your bank account. Immeasurably than what your academic achievement, uh, your academic degree can achieve. Immeasurably than what, even the distance that your car can go. Immeasurably than what your resources can cover. So go and operationalize those things because the Lord has deposited you in you something. Go and do the new things. So you are being unleashed. You have been unleashed. And in fact, the truth is that you were unleashed. You, you were unleashed. So I, I am rather informing you that you were unleashed. To allow something to have its full effect. So you go to school and you write exams if it is first degree, then you have your first class and you come and you are celebrating. And then you think that that is the full effect. Oh no, that is not the full effect at all. That is not the full effect. You may be promoted at your place of work and you think that is the full effect. Oh no, that's not the full effect. It is a process to the full effect. So whatever that you are celebrating this year or you had last year, I want to announce to you that it is a process. Because what the Lord has is immeasurable. So if you can quantify it or you can measure it, then it is not what the Lord does. But for him, he can go beyond what you have. So please, go and do new things. This year, start doing new things. You have been living by the old methods for a very long time. And things are not working as expected. Even the, the style, your style of marriage is too old. It's too old. These things that you knew from Macio's time, you are still doing them. And the thing is not working properly. And then you are there and saying people don't like you. But you are, you, are, you, are, you are. So I pray and cancel obsolete ideas, archaic ideas, 
And the Bible, for the Bible contest, biblical contest, it say, conscience that dead works emanate from. So all those dead things, in the name of Jesus, we cancel them. And then receive new models of doing things. Because we are beginning with the alpha. And the one who is taking us to the end is the omega. The alpha and the omega. And in between the alpha and omega, there is no other word. There is no other word. So, let Jesus guide you. Because it is the desire of the Lord that you are going to do new things. For that one, that is what the Lord has promised. And when you read from James chapter 1 verse 5, he said, if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So if we are talking about the new things, then we are talking about acquiring wisdom from the Lord to go and do things. Because the new and the new that we are talking about is not just a maxim or mantra, but it is something that you must make an effort and work towards it. There are principles that will guide you to be able to attain the new things. So your place of work, we have just begun. Some of you have already resumed. Some resumed last week, some are yet to resume and all that. Let the environment see that a new person has come here. In the name of Jesus Christ, that department, there must be a feel. They must feel that, ah, but what is happening? Last year it wasn't like that. What is really happening? A new person has come. So if previously, and then when you read from 1 John chapter 1, I'm just about to end. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. 1 John 1, 8 to 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sin, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. We have come back again to the purification. And the effect of the purification is to make it nice. So God is working on us today. We will go as nice people. We will just live here and go and then you will see that the conscience, nice. The mindset, nice. And the heart, nice. The way he walks, nice. When he touches something, nice. When he steps somewhere, nice. And God did this to Moses to the extent that even the, the staff he was holding was nice. So you show it to the sea. The sea say, no, I've been seeing a lot of things, but this kind of stuff is so wonderful and amazing. So I cannot stand where I am. I have parted. So if God touches you, everything nice. Somebody, sometimes someone will say that he wants to marry another person, and then you go there, and for some reasons, then the person say, I will not do that again. Maybe he didn't see something nice. But today, go as a nice person. Everything nice. You look at someone's face, nice. You attend interview, nice. So the partner will just sit down and they look at you, ah, this guy, <laughs> we didn't intend to take him. But the way he is nice, we have to accept him. Because there are some cleansing, something happened oh. It is not that man, what he's wearing that is making, making him nice. Something has happened. Because some of us here seated here, some were drunkards. Some were drug addicts. But this blood has made you nice. This blood, this same blood has made me nice. So, nice woman. Nice man, just tell your colleague. Look at you. You, are, you look so nice. Nice. So nice. So nice. Because of purification. Because of washing. It, it looks so nice. You look so nice. So where that shop is nice. 
So people come, they are moving along, and the others are calling. Hey, be my na, blah, 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 blah. Then he's looking for the nice store. So, oh, come, oh, please, I have everything. Then he's looking for the nice store. The nice one. The nice one. And even in Egypt, what happened? When the blood was used to mark their doorpost, what happened there? The angel of death, angel that kills human beings. And then they released the angel that kills human beings. And then he was going for inspection to kill people in a community. And this angel was going. And then he sees this one, the blood, he sees it, he says, it's so nice. People here don't have to die. Then he goes here, he says, no, I'll kill this one. And then he was killing randomly. And that is how God has made us. So even when COVID came recently, those marked with the nice blood, he, sees, uh, he saw us, he bypassed. But sometimes when I'm going on trek and I see some communities in Ghana, I ask myself that, hey, the way these people were many years, so during the COVID time, did this community exist or it was post-COVID community? <laughs> because you see the way people are so many and this, but the Lord has favored us. Brothers and sisters, this is the beginning of the year. Let the favor of God lead you. It's not by your might. It's not by your wisdom. It's not by my strength. But this Alpha and Omega, this man, that no one can truncate his plans, let this man lead you. And as he leads you, think about his work. As he leads you, think about his work. So, the last one is that we need to forget the past. Apostle Paul in Philipp, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heaven was, in Christ. To do new things, forget about the past. What you went through last year, what you went through yesterday, if you want to live on them, it means you are not moving forward. We are talking about new things. We are not talking about old things. The reference, the only old things that we can refer to is the, the way God was faithful to the past, to our forebears. And then we bring that aspect to come and inform us of what God can do for us tomorrow. So sometimes when we are learning history, we are not interested in dead people. We want to know what they did right when they were alive so that we can modify it to go for it. Or what they did wrong so that we can avoid wrong history repeating itself in our day. Otherwise, don't live on the past. God is doing new things. And you are the one that you have been unleashed to go and have full effect. So, beloved in Christ, I pray for you this morning. That the Lord God Almighty to, has already unleashed everything of yours. So make sure that by the end of this year, you will see the full potential of your ministry and life. God is not reinventing the wheel. Jesus died on the cross for you. He died for me. What is left is that I should know myself in Christ. And know yourself in Christ immeasurably than what you can ask or think. May God bless you. And may the Lord prepare you. May the Lord make you new. Amen.